Okay, so uh, let's use the Fourier transform to solve the heat equation on an infinite line. And we'll be making use of this integral that we did last time. Uh, so we, we're going to apply Fourier transform in, with respect to x. So what's going to happen is that this t derivative is not going to affect anything. So it'll just still be free a transform of u. You're just differentiating that by t. On the other hand, uh, every derivative by x gives you what? In the free transform. It gives you negative is, right? But you differentiate it twice, so this is being squared. So this is what you have. So what did we just achieve? What is this? It only has derivative with respect to t, right? Yeah. So it's an ODE. Yeah. We actually know how to solve y prime equals to ay. Right? What's the solution to this? This one, right? Uh, oh, uh, in our case, it's the derivative with the t, so let's think of it this way. So this immediately tells us that u hat, which, by the way, uh, it's still a function of t, only x is now changed to s. We'll change to uh, some constant times e to the a is negative ks squared, and then times t. Now, uh, you have to be careful. Uh, we're really thinking of this as a function of t while fixing s. We're treating s as a constant in view of a, uh, this equation because this is a differential equation with respect to t. So although I wrote down c here, it's really a function of s. Yeah, it's a function of s. Uh, and uh, moreover, we know the following too. Uh, if you have u hat, of s of 0, that's really the u of x 0. That's, that, that's what happens when time t equals to 0. So it's a free transform of u x 0. So this is f of x free transform. Because u x 0 is f of x, uh, which we will figure out later. OK. So. The solution seems to pop up amazingly fast. However, we're not done yet, right? What do we have to do? Always the trade-off of replacing derivatives by some simple algebraic operation is that you have to invert the transformation. So we have to do the invert inversion. So let's actually do the inversion. So inversion of u s t is the integral from negative infinity to infinity of c times e to the negative k s squared t uh, times e to the negative i s x with 1 over 2 pi. Right? That's the inversion formula that we talked about. Right? You multiply this, you do, do that. And then, we have to integrate this by s so that the resulting function is a function of x. Okay. Then you're going to get this. This will be our u of x. OK. So for a moment, let's not think about c as a function of s, right? because this is really Th 
this this uh, this this c here is really a function of s. So it's this thing here, but uh, we're going to use the fact that if you have two functions f s and g s, and you do the inversion, that same as convolution, right? So products becoming convolutions, we talked about this phenomenon earlier in, in an example of ODEs. So that's what's going to happen for us. So as long as you can figure out what this integral is, then this other one will be just a convolution of that one. Okay? All right, so let's, let's figure out the inversion of only the Gaussian part. Now this is going to be 1 over 2 pi. You can put these two together and you get e to the negative k s squared t minus i s x d s. And that's exactly the same as this one, right? Except since you're integrating with respect to s here rather than x, so think of this x squared as s squared here, so that a is really k t. Is that okay? a is k t. And then uh, b is equal to negative i x, right? And we worked really hard to get this result last time. Uh, if you recall, we got this result by first showing it for e to the negative a x squared, and then we did the completing the square to get this result. So uh, the end result is that uh, you get one over two pi times. We just have to quote that now. E to the b squared, which is negative i s squared over 4 a, a is k t, times square root of pi over a, a is k t again, right? Uh, right. And then uh, you can bring this 2 pi into here as 4 pi squared, but then one of the pi's will cancel the, the pi up top, right? So you're going to end up with 1 over square root of 4 pi kt. And you get e to the i squared is negative 1. Negative squared is just positive 1. So you get negative, oh, sorry. Here, uh, b is not is. b is ix, sorry. B is I X. Right? Because S is our X. So B would be I times X, negative I X. So this, this is going to be E to the negative X squared over 4 K T. Okay. And then you have this product, and that's the result of the inverse principle. Okay. So is B Ix? Yeah, B is Ix. Because S is our variable. S is like the X here. B is negative Ix. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so uh, what's our solution then? U of Xt is therefore, it's the, uh, this function of X convoluted with 1 over square root of 4 pi kt e to the negative x squared over 4 kt. And uh, you're doing the convolution as functions of x, right? So uh, the actual integral would be something like this. Uh, let's use, uh, uh, yeah, let's use s again. So you integrate from negative infinity to infinity of f of s times 1 over square root of 4 pi kt 
E is a negative. Oh, I just rem remembered. People like to use Y, sorry. So uh, let's use Y. So F of Y, and you have Y minus X squared over 4KT dy. Okay? And th this is a, your final result. And uh, it, it's a nice result because it doesn't care which function f of x is. And uh, this one here has a name. This is called a heat kernel. Okay. It's called a heat kernel. This, this follows the same principle that I talked about. A lot of times if you have some generic functions, the solutions end up being some convolution. It happens in the theory of Green's functions. It happens in the theory of du Duhamel's principle. It happens here as a heat kernel. You integrate that against some, something called a kernel. Some, some, uh, there are some other kernels, like uh, you'll see that for Laplace equations on this, there's something called a Poisson kernel and stuff like that. There are various functions that you integrate against and suddenly it gives you a solution to all that. Now this one, uh, it's, although it looks crazy, for fixed t, these are just constant, that's just the constant. So this function looks like e is a negative x squared. So how does that look? It looks like that. So again, if you looked at this part of the solution, the heat kernel has the following graph. It looks like this one. With As t goes to 0, it goes to like that. It's actually a delta function at 0. So if you take the heat kernel, usually people call this heat kernel k, uh, x, y, t. That's how people call it, right? And then if you take the k and you send t going to 0, you end up with a delta function x minus 1, or y minus x. I can't figure out which one's right. Maybe it's y minus x. Or maybe it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. All right. Uh, so you get this. And, and what it does is, if you have a if you have a function, initial condition that, that has discontinuities, and when you integrate this, uh, the resulting function can be differentiated infinitely many times as long as t is positive. Because think about how you can differentiate this. You're differentiating this as a function of x, right? But there is no x here. This one only has x. And as long as t is a positive number, this is a smooth function, right? So you can actually differentiate this which again shows, just like the solution of the heat equation on the half line, the, the, the moment after you have an initial condition that's a, that has a discontinuity, suddenly it becomes differential. That's the crazy thing. 